Stephanie Precourt is thrilled to be on stage again after a very long, married with four children, hiatus. She works at home, or pretends to, with the kids as a freelance writer for Real Mom's Guide, Northwest Indiana Parent Magazine, and her own personal blog, Adventures in Baby Wearing. Growing up, she had great plans to be on Broadway, in the movies, or directing children's theater. But mostly she finds that she and her husband, Jeff, are best at managing every kind of drama, tragedy, and comedy in their little home with four very entertaining kids. Stephanie will be reading, I Can't Wait for Bedtime. Family bed, bed sharing, co-sleeping, whatever you want to call it, my kids have all at some point or still sleep with me. Ivy slept with me since the day she was born and will probably continue to sleep with me for a while, and I honestly wouldn't have it any other way, except when she won't sleep. Often bedtime is the only time I finally get a moment to myself. I admit many days I can't wait for the kids to go to bed. Like for real, sometimes that's what I look forward to all day long. <laughs> It had kept me going. My plan after the kids were asleep, when I'd be by myself to watch Project Runway all by myself and fold five loads of laundry I'd saved up just for it, all by myself. I'd finally gotten Ivy to sleep. Only a couple minutes into my show, just as I had sat down on the floor with a salad in my laundry, Gray appeared. I can't give much to sleep. Now, anyone with more than one child knows of the whack-a-mole factor. You know, the arcade game. You get one child to sleep, and there's another one this close to your face as soon as you close your eyes. <laughs> Warning, whack-a-mole factor is greatly magnified when vomit is involved. <laughs> My kids have always been so good at taking turns. <laughs> I sent him downstairs, go see Daddy, and he was back immediately. He wouldn't go to bed, and now he was eyeing my salad. Like I can refuse a kid some salad. I so desperately wanted him to go away so that I could watch my show uninterrupted because he can't just sit there and eat salad, but instead he eats and talks when I'm trying to hear Tim Gunn. <laughs> I decided to let him hang out with me, and soon he had brought in his pillow and blankets, and I glance over and he's asleep on my floor. There was a moment that I sat there and I just stared at him. I studied his big eyelashes and the way his nose perks, and I swear I saw him aging right there in his sleep. I saw it all, the meaning of life. This life rushes over me in less than a millisecond. So fast, my mind can't even grab it. I can only feel it. In one of my favorite movies from the 80s, Parenthood, Grandma tells Steve Martin a story about how she loved the roller coaster. You know, when I was 19, Grandpa took me on a roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, oh, what a ride. You know, it was so interesting to me that a ride could make me so frightened, so scared, so sick, so excited and so thrilled all together. Some didn't like it and they went on the merry-go-round, but that just goes around, nothing. I like the roller coaster. You get more out of it. They make me long for bedtime. They make me wanna run away and they make me lose my breath, oh God. I don't wanna imagine life without them. Now I'd like for everyone to join me on stage. Couple, a couple final words. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so grateful to the Memorial Opera House for standing in as the vision of where I wanted to have my show. It has been everything I've dreamed. Thank you. Do be sure to check out the current season of shows coming at the Memorial Opera House. May 20th, the doo-wop group Harbor Lights, Chicago the Musical on sale now, June 3rd through 12th, and coming in July, uh, Disney's Camp Rock. 
And for information on all upcoming events or to buy tickets, check out mohlive.com. And you can sign up for their newsletter online, fan them on Facebook, tell them how much you love the show, and support our local theater community. In addition to supporting women's creative expression, Listen to Your Mother's mission includes supporting women financially through contributions to local nonprofit causes. All five Listen to Your Mother's shows will donate to our national cause, City of Joy, as well as a local cause. Tonight, we are giving to Gabriel's Horn, Horn Homeless Shelter for women and children in Valparaiso. As our national director, Ann Immig, builds the infrastructure to support Listen to Your Mother's growth, growth nationwide, her work with women survivors of gender violence in Bukavu, Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, City of Joy is a place of healing, empowerment, and leadership training directed and operated by the Congolese women survivors themselves for themselves. In tonight's program, you'll find more information on how to give to these causes if you feel moved. Gabriel's Horn is always accepting women's children, especially size large, and children's clothing, babies on up, as well as monetary and gas cards, etc. The more we give, the better life is for so many, including our own. I have to thank my awesome cast again. We wouldn't have listened to your mother without them. I want to say good night to you all. Happy Mother's Day tomorrow, and thank you to you all for being a part of this fabulous night. I do hope you'll hold it in your heart forever. And of course, always listen to your mother. <laughs> Again, we'd like to thank you all for coming. And we also have a very special thank you to our wonderful producer, director, Stephanie Precourt. We could not have done this without her. She provided this absolutely fabulous opportunity for those of us here in Northwest Indiana to come up here and share a little bit of what it's like for motherhood for all of us and for all of you. So, Stephanie? And we also all signed one of the wonderful posters that we've had around town that she can therefore put up. So, there you go. Thank you. Thank you.